Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. And in this video, we're going to be discussing planting um, squash um, into this location. Right behind me are some beets that are going into bolt, um, being that we're now at late May here in Southern California. And um, I'm going to show you how we're going to replace our beet area with um, our beginning starter squash plants and how to use Ivy Organics. Um, three-in-one tree guard paint to basically give um, these plants a good fresh start in the in the ground. I'm going to set these down over here. These methods, um, which I can show you over here, can also be applied to this here is squash. These are some jalapeno peppers we're going to be um, planting in our garden as well as um, some Armenian, um, it says Persian cucumbers as well. So um, this same method can actually be applied to all of these plants. I'm going to set this can over here. Um, the first thing we're going to do, and if we take a look here, are the beet plants. They're all going into bolt, which means they're going into flower, um, being that it's again late May. Um, so these will basically all flower and then create the seeds, which will then create the next generation of beets in our garden. I am going to leave my largest um, beet plant, which is back here, that's gone into bolt. I'm going to save those for seeds, but everything else we're actually going to consume it. We're going to use the leaves as well um, to make salads. Um, and then the roots we're going to be boiling or baking and using that as well in our salads and other um, and other meals. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, is pull pull these roots out. And as you can see, these here are the beets. Um, here's another little baby beet um, that's in here. But we're going to pull all the beets out of the ground. And take a look at these roots. They're amazing. And keep in mind, take a look at this as well. If you zoom in. You can actually see that there's um, actually a little slug um, that's found its way um, onto this plant. Um, this garden is actually loaded. As you can see, there's um, these plants were actually planted in the um, mid-fall, so October, November of last year. Um, between last year and now, here it's May, you can see that there's plenty of wood chips over here. Um, sometimes when I can pull this back, I'll actually see um, roly polies, I'll see slugs in here, obviously a lot of earthworms. Um, there's a lot of life in this soil and you do want to keep as many insects as possible. There are no bad insects in this garden, including um, aphids, which some people when they see them immediately go and try to put some chemical pesticides into their garden. But in our garden, when we actually see aphids, that's actually um, the food for um, our very welcome um, ladybugs, praying mantis, and all these other insect predators that actually feed. Um, on what we consider the pest. So we have a healthy balance here of um, insects here in our garden. So even though I see a slug here, um, we welcome them as what it's doing is eating the organic matter, feeding the soil, which is ultimately feeding and you know creating these amazing um, foods that we will bring into our home. So let's continue um, pulling these plants out. Here's a couple more beets. Take a look at that and all these healthy leaves. Another, another, get a couple more of these out. So there we go. That'll be pretty much the number of beats that we're gonna pull out. We'll set those down right over here next to me. The next thing that we're going to do is this here is a chard plant that actually seeded itself from the year prior. Um, we've been actually removing the leaves and using those in salads um, throughout the week, but this plant is still growing faster than um, we were consuming it. The top is just about ready to start bolting to actually give your chard plant a little bit longer of a life. We're actually going to prune just the top of it. There we go. We just removed the top here of the plant. This here will be part of our salad as well for this evening. And we're gonna allow this, these side leaves to actually continue rejuvenating the plant and continue to feed our family. I'm gonna save these leaves um, for the future. I'll actually prune a couple more as this here is gonna be going into our planting zone. So those leaves will all be washed and consumed with, over the next couple of days. Um, we're now gonna clear an area. We're just installing one um, one of our squash plants in this area. Um, it's a summer squash, a zucchini variety. First thing we're gonna do is actually remove the wood chips. As we just explained, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, 
snails, a lot of slugs, a lot of roly polies, a lot of pincher bugs. Um, you know, all of these can actually damage your early um, planting. So we're gonna remove all that. I got these empty buckets over here. I'm gonna fill that up real quick. So all that goes right there in the bucket. Here we got, look at these earthworms. If you wanna zoom in over here. So you can see all the life that exists right underneath these, um, right underneath these wood chips. So it shows that there's a lot of life in here. And the way it's created is by, is by growing organically. So we're gonna get our second bucket here. All of these wood chips will actually be returned right into the same spot in about 30 days. We wanna give, um, so take a look over here as well. They're all curling up, but there's so many roly polies. I don't know if you can see that here in the video. Right there is one, here's a second roly poly. These are actually, and here's a third roly poly. These are very damaging actually to your young seedlings in the garden as well. So, um, so I'm gonna actually give you a tip on how Ivory Organics can help protect your plants to get them through the first month until they're large enough that when they're consuming the organic material, they're actually feeding your plants and not hopefully eating your new seedlings. So we're gonna pick those up as well. So the next step here that we're gonna do is dig a hole. So we're digging about one, one square foot around. We're not necessarily improving the entire soil area, even though it may not be a bad idea, but we're just gonna improve this one little square foot. Here I'm just taking some compost. This here is an amend made by Kellogg's. Um, it says down here that it's an organic product as well. We don't want to use anything that's got chemicals that can harm the soil organisms. So we're just going to put one or two scoops of that in the soil. And the next step before I mix this all in is I want to show you some organic products that we can use. This here is um, Espoma. Um, it says plant tone, organic, all-purpose plant food. And on the side here, um, and figure when you're actually gardening in your garden, you're actually the researcher and the scientist that's trying to figure out what's the best thing for your plants. But this one here actually says 533. 5% nitrogen, 3% phosphorus, 3% potassium. The 5% is um, the energy that's going into um, growing your plants, keeping them green and lush. The 3% is for fruit production and flowers. And the other 3% is for root, um, root health, disease resist resistance. So 533, 5% nitrogen, this is a good product as we want the plants to actually start off to a good start. But let me, here's another product as well. I just want to um, share and educate you on this. Here's the Job's Organic Fertilizer. Um, on the back here it says 444. I like this product as well, being it's a balanced product with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Equal percentages, 4% across the board. And the last product I want to share here is another Job's product. It says for vegetables and tomatoes. If we turn this over, it actually says 274. I actually will not be using this product to start off my plants as it only has 2% nitrogen. We want the plants to actually start off with a lot of vigor and a lot of growth. 2% nitrogen is actually pretty weak, but the 7% of flowers and fruit production is actually gonna be highly important as we get through the growing season. So in our next round of fertilizing, which will be 30 to 60 days from now, I'll be using this product more so than any other product, being we want a lot of fruit and a lot of flower production. Um, and the 4% again is for the potassium disease resistance um, and health. So, um, and all of these products are actually, are all organic. They're all gonna go into the soil. Let me move this back, please. So they're all gonna go into the soil, feed the soil organisms, um, and help create um, a healthy environment that's gonna create healthy plants and healthy produce for you and your family. So I'm actually gonna use this here today. Um, the two choices I would actually go between is the 444 and the 533. Um, but right now, being that I've got a lot more of this product to help me get through the rest of my plantings this evening, I'm just going to be using this here. So we're going to open that up. And we're going to pour about a cup of this product in here. Set that down. And we're just going to mix it. And that's it. We're going to return the rest of the native soil on top. Continue mixing. And then we're just gonna get our hands on um, one of these squash plants over here. Get a little hand tool. We're just gonna open this up over here. So 
the next step is you want to um, get your squash plants out of the container. You want to you typically squeeze on the bottom to loosen the roots, and then you'll pull over on the top. Examine the root base. If you actually see that it's coiled, it's actually okay sometimes to actually rip um, some of those lower roots off so that when the new roots actually start growing, they grow out and away from the plant, creating a deeper, um, a deeper root system. We're now gonna put our plant right here in the hole. Make sure, unlike our tomato plants that we've done a video on where you wanna plant them deep, squash, my peppers, my cucumbers, you wanna plant them at ground level. So we're gonna install that here in the ground and fill it in with soil. And make sure again, you keep it at ground level and not to go and not to go below. And here's all of the leaves right there. I'm actually gonna take another scoop of compost and put that around the plant here. And then we're gonna just water that down like so. Make sure you water it deep, especially on your initial watering. So we're gonna water that down. And the last step we're gonna do here, actually a couple things I wanna share with you. I brought over here some companion plants as well. So I wanna discuss that real quick. Here I've got actually some onion plants. Um, these are some starters that I picked up from the local nursery. Um, these are some sweet onions. They come just like so. Just a few little roots, it looks dried out. It's got a little bit of green life in there. Um, but we're actually gonna take two to three of these and just put them here on the ground. A couple of companion plants that are actually good to have in your garden are onions, um, which you can add as, you know, with your meals. We're gonna have some squash. We can add some, you know, the green leaves um, to the meal. As they develop, we can actually use the bulbs. Um, another good companion plant to actually have in your garden is this nasturtium. You can, as identified here by these flowers, these flowers are actually edible. Um, some people actually even eat the leaves, but the flowers actually are beautiful decorations for, it, um, for your salads. Um, and as I said, it could also be edible. And another um, good plant to also introduce into your gardens are marigolds. Marigolds are other good companion plants to actually introduce around your um, vegetables. Um, but when it comes to companion plants, don't crowd your garden. Um, as you can see here, there's you know a lot of things going on here. We have our squash plant over here. Um, to the right, we have this basil, which we're gonna talk about um, shortly as well. But I'm actually just gonna squeeze these onion plants over here. And these onions, these onions are actually just gonna squeeze right in here and just group the three together. It's gonna to cover that up with a little bit of soil. And we just have the tops sticking out. But these onion plants will only be here for a very brief period of time. We're talking about for 30 to 60 days. Um, we're just talking about for the next 30 to 60 days, these onions will be here. As this squash plant develops, these will actually come out and actually complement something else in our garden. So this won't be here for too long. This basil plant will actually grow about two to three feet. So this will actually have its own space. This here will have its own space as well. Um, and again, these won't be interfering, but they're just here as starter plants um, and something else that actually helps the soil microorganisms. Um, it's, it's just another um, environment for the insects here in the garden. So we're gonna put these onions here. Um, that'll be here for the short time. The next step we're gonna do is add some Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. And this here is what the can actually looks like. This one here I actually prepared right before the video, um, but when you actually purchase it, it comes, comes like so. It comes with a white powder. This is an organic white paint. Um, it also comes with um, a vial which contains neem oil and castor oil. And for those that garden a lot um, and trying to get rid of your pests in your garden, neem oil is something that actually could be used to get rid of your um, the pests that you don't want, such as the aphids, um, wood boring beetles, um, and, other, and other organisms. But typically this is um, applied to your garden on a two to four week schedule um, if there's a lot of pests in your garden. So this here is actually goes into this paint product. What we're gonna use it for today um, is using it as a spray. So we're gonna actually gonna take the finished product which is already added, you know, water's been added to it per the instructions on the can. And then we're just gonna take about a teaspoon of this and apply it to a water bottle. Put the cap back on and seal it. And what this actually does, it's tomorrow is expected to be in the 90s. Um, and this here is, you know, the, the white Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. It also comes in green and brown. But by spraying it, we've pretty much created a sunblock uh, to keep the plant cool. But most importantly, we've now made these leaves taste bad 
for the roly polies that are in here, for the pincher bugs that are in here, for the slugs that are in here. Um, so aside from the white organic paint, we also got the neem oil and the castor oil, which is going to make this plant taste bad, give the plant an excellent fresh start at growth um, as it gets established, um, and and basically shield it as it as it develops itself. I wanted to also compare now, if we take a look over here, you can see the basil. This basil was installed just two days ago and you can see more likely than not it was the roly polies or the pill bugs that are in the garden. They're actually starting to chew on this leaf and we're gonna spray this as well um, with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. And that's pretty much it. This here has now got those leaves coated. If anything tries to eat it, so be it. That's fine, let them eat it. Um, but the point is hopefully they won't be consuming too much of it while it gets established and starts growing. And I wanna compare that to another um, basil plant that I have here in the garden over here. And you can see that this here was sprayed two days ago. The leaves are actually still in excellent condition. Um, so I'm able to demonstrate the difference between with and without the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. But you're not gonna eat these leaves. Um, it would be too difficult to actually clean it. But the point is, as this plant grows, the new growth is the, is the, is the, pro, you know, the product that will actually be consumed, whereas the rest of it, the lower leaves are what's gonna help get this plant established and give it a good start at life. Anyways, this here pretty much concludes our video on um, introducing vegetables into your garden using Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint as a um, plant spray to help protect your plants from both sunburn as well as being consumed by insects um, and making your plants taste bad as they get a fresh start. So it actually has a lot of benefits uh, for helping getting your new introduced uh, both trees, fruit trees, shrubs, and, and in this case your vegetables start in the ground. I hope you found this video informative. If so, be sure to like it. Most importantly, subscribe so you don't miss any of our other educational videos. Thank you for watching and happy gardening. Take care.